What is up, you guys? Rigors, welcome to our VPL draft analysis with, of course, yours truly, the Scarander or the Scandinavian Stutland. And uh, yeah, I will say this um, the VPL, is, as you guys know, are hopefully are uh, <laughs> a UCL format league, which basically are smaller rules uh, apply with, uh, of course, the UCL format, which is, you know, free of every tier. NU and NPU are actually combined together for a 12 draft league. And uh, yeah, I wasn't too proud with um, how my draft uh, actually ended up with. It was decent as it ended up with, but I decided to change a whole lot actually. And uh, like I said, it was not because the team was necessarily bad. It just, it could be a lot better. And I decided to do or patch as much as I could really. So, starting off the draft, I picked up Tornadoes, because I figured, alright, let's go for a Witter-based team, or at least try to grab, you know, Politeoid and stuff like that. Had it in mind. Uh, I got sniped, actually, uh, when it comes to Politeoid, with a snipe action from Turbo. Snipe action was a concept we had, basically, so anybody could cut in line once, uh, to basically ensure that you get an ideal draft, um, or as close to it as it could, really. Uh, so, you know, that's all fine and dandy, uh, so I decided to pick up Mega Jardos instead, which you guys can see is not a part of here. And then after that, I decided to pick up Latios, uh, because Latios is a generally good Pokemon, uh, with healing, wish, defogging, pretty speedy, and uh, recover, you know, stuff like that, it, it works really well. Same goes with Tornadoes, which is, you know, the primary Pyrus model when it comes to OU, being able to, of course, U-turn very freely, it has a really broad move pool, a pretty decent attack and special attack to boot. And um, yeah, it's a mod that actually wins a lot of matchups naturally. So having it a part of a team is important. And then of course we have Mega Daigenshi. Like I said, I had Mega Jaros first because we had a... Um, I was thinking that I want to use a Mega Pokemon I've used before. Mega Jaro does kind of fit the bar. But um, yeah, let's just say that things turned out differently. But bringing back Mega the Energy from, of course, TBU Season 2 is awesome. I really like Mega the Energy. Mega the Energy is definitely one of my favorite mods to use. Extremely aggressive, uh, which is how I like it. Very, very speedy at 110 speed. And then we have just one of those really good abilities to ensure they can't be Thunder Waved. It can't be Willow Waves, Toxic Stall, and anything like that. Though, necessarily, it's fresh and allowed to not be stalled out. And, of course, um, make sure that Hazard stays on, away from the field. So. Mega the has a lot of things going for it. The only trick of using it is, you know, of course, that it isn't as speedy from the get go. Rock polish solves that, and also a few mods that actually can help it out much better than it could TBU season. So, Mega the Engine is a standalone Pokemon. Awesome. I'm really glad to have that back. And just this OU draft seems a lot better than the first one I ended up with. Oh, yeah, I actually should talk about that. I actually had Raikou for a few days before I actually decided to get a one up. This, of course, is followed up with a UU draft. And as you guys see, there is a Scarlet page on this draft. Isn't that OU? And yes, you are right. Let's actually save that one a little bit. Um, as you guys can see, I decided to actually pick both Cobalion and Hydreigon. I did pick Conkildur, decided not to use Conkildur. I actually picked Conkildur first there in UU. And I'm not too proud of that pick, mostly because I didn't really think that one out. I was obviously at work. When the draft was going on UU, and uh, basically I handed out, um, you know, this is what I'm gonna, this is what um, what I want, and I picked Conkeller. Not that smart. Same thing went with Hydreigon actually, since I already had Gajardos while I was doing that, um, and Lodios. <laughs> so those two picks really, 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 really badly doesn't don't really synergize well with my team. And then I picked Cobalion because I figured that all right. I need to at least get a steel track of some kind. Um, so there's where we are. Now, like I said, there, uh, I did decide lately to upgrade my Conkeller to Scolipede, and the upgrade option was something I was introducing that if you weren't using a sniping ability, you would naturally end up with a weaker team if you weren't snipe or didn't snipe anyone to get your idle drafts. That they all be out. You had the option to actually upgrade your Pokemon to hopefully get some kind of advantage. And I decided to pick Scolipede. I was feeling Mega Altaria uh, for quite some time actually. Decided not to do that. As you guys see, I picked Mega the Engine instead, but 
yeah, that would have been extremely funny. I even was considering, actually, before I actually picked Megadenshi, to even drop Hydreigon for uh, Mega Gyarados. Did end up not doing so, and like I said, it was juggling that back and forth. But any up with Scolipede, because Scolipede, I do believe, can help out a lot of mods that almost are fast enough to deal with what they're going to be able to deal with here in, well, basically what people have been drafting. And also, I needed offensive poison and bug type. And while Mega Beedrill could have fit that bar, Scolipede just did a lot better in my regard and a much, much more reliable hard hitting mod with, of course, Mega Horn and uh, Poison Jab. And of course, those niche moves of Earthquake, Superpower, of Jordan, uh, Superpower, and Aqua Tail. So it has a lot of good things going for it. I'm really looking forward to you, Scolipede. Cobalion, nothing really to it. If you've seen my TBU season, you know I like. Uh, Cobalion, I like it as a Stealth Rocker, Pirate Mon, and just in general, good stabs. And Hydreigon, never used Hydreigon, ever. We're used it in UU format sometime, but um, not in leagues. So, looking forward to that. I do believe Hydreigon is very, very underrated. It has a good typing, it is, it is weak to fairy, but at the same time, I have now the chance to, of course, design for them, which is something that, well, in general, is making Hydreigon much much more threatening in this kind of environment. So, with that said, Hydreigon is pretty darn cool to have here. This of course is followed up by our RU picks for of course this league. And I started off with Delphox because I've never used Delphox. I needed a fire type and I didn't want any half-assed fire type from NU. Now granted, Delphox is not the most impressive um, fire type and it has psychic which means that I now have two psychic types yet again and um, well that's not ideal as <laughs> everybody know of course but yeah outside of that it's a good mon it is a general good mon um, very very broad move pool kind of niche speed of 1 or 4 which would help it out a lot and um, I'm looking forward to trying this out in this format then we have Jelly Synth. And Jellison is basically there because I needed a water type that can soak hits and recover. Bulky water types is generally more appreciated than a more offensive one. Having that said, Jellison is basically here because it's a good rapid or rapid spinner, I was gonna say, but uh, a good spin blocker. God damn it, I'm joining. Recording this late at night. Um, it's a good spin blocker. Has Will O Wisp, has Taunt, um, and of course Hex and stuff like that and uh, has water absorb which is very very helpful and just it's a hard mod to kill and um, that is kind of the end part of it and uh, i think jelly synth is really really cool i used it in the mount moon league and uh, with some success actually i should probably use it much much more than i really do because it's um, since it's so hard to kill it can do so much more due to that and that's just knocks it out of the park so i really appreciate that and then we have, of course, Drapion, because Drapion, of course, makes it back. Uh, should be noted, uh, I had regular Dayenshi here. I dropped regular Dayenshi to, of course, pick up Mega Dayenshi. But I got the chance to have a Drapion again. And I do believe Drapion is the most reoccurring uh, Pokemon in my league format. And yeah, is what I have to say about that. <laughs> no, but really, Drapion is one of those mods that, you know, good poison stab. Great speed, toxic spike. It's a, it's a stationary or grounded poison type that can soak toxic spikes, and um, it has sniper, it has a battle armor, and um, it has pursuit trapping, which is something I really like, and it's something that's good with signing for. So Drapion's a standalone Pokemon is a very very good one. I do believe it's a really really good fairy killer in this format, and uh, yeah. That's really like, I can't really praise Drapion much more, I really like it as a standalone Pokemon, and uh, it's just really cool to have it here. Synergy-wise, it might not do anything for the team, but since I already have Dark-type and a Poison-type, but an edge here is that at least Drapion outside of Hydreigon can set up, and that is something that could be worked to its advantage, and they actually are similar in speed, and can do similar things, just different kind of offensive move pools. But yeah, really like that, and like I said, Delphox, super cool, really want to try this out in this kind of format. Then, NU happened. 
And I say happen because I am not particularly fond of my NU draft. Then again, NU is basically filler at this point, and um, the more effective mods, of course, are in the higher tier. But one thing that dawned on me was that there are very few good grass types left, and I need, of course, something to soak. Earthquake. While I have, I do believe, three floaters who can, of course, deal with that, I still have to realize that I need an effective grass type, and Gold guys were already gone, of course. Tangela was something I didn't even consider. So I have to really... <laughs> I was looking at... Soulspark exists, but Soulspark doesn't necessarily soak any Earthquake. Then we have Go-Goats. I don't like Go-Goats, so that's kind of going out of the way too. And then we have the new Endumon in the tier, which of course is Trevenant. And Trevenant, yeah, it's... It could be everything or nothing, depending on Harvest, it's a good ability Ghost-type combined with knockoff is not uh, such a good <laughs> time But it has a lot of other abilities and I'm sure I'll find a way to use it I uh, haven't used Trevenant in um, League format for obvious reasons, it's not necessarily a good mod But um, I think for this kind of... Um, for what it brings to my team is that might actually not be half bad and um, yeah, it, just, it looks cool. And of course, looking cool is like a main priority, <laughs> obviously. Uh, then I followed that up with uh, Pile of Swine. Uh, I basically wanted another rocker, I wanted a ground type, and since I already had a rock type, I really couldn't pick right on. So Pile of Swine kind of fit that ball, and also priority to Ice Shard, kind of nice. And uh, yeah, just Pile of Swine might not be the most impressive mod standalone, but for this kind of environment, we're actually represent um, a typing, like a, com a a unique typing combination, it helps me at least get the stabs I was kind of missing. And uh, for the last mod I actually picked Tauros, I was considering Kangaskhan, but due to my, I wasn't really proud of what I have picked so far, I decided that, shit, you know what, um, I might as well pick uh, to or Tauros instead. Because at least Tauros can be extremely unique in every format really, but it definitely shines in Lee format because it has a lot of smart things going for it. So in the end of the, end of the day, Tauros was a really easy choice to make and um, it it will help out against a lot of matchups. And of course with Share Force Life Orb, yes, it's gonna be extremely destructible and um, I think it will do well. <laughs> I should say, like I said, Kangaskhan was a consideration. Buffalon was a consideration. Decided to go with Tauros because it's a lot more flexible and hopefully in the end that's gonna be more rewarding than uh, niche myself out because I think I already niche myself too much to be saying that I have a good synergized team anyway. So that is the complete draft and uh, yeah this picture looks really crowded doesn't it? But um, yeah, i ending up liking the team much more than I actually did from the beginning. Uh, now the changes, of course. Like I said there, um, Conkeldor became, of course, Scolipede. Love that. And then we have three changes, though there are actually only two, depending on how you want to see it. The Yenshi was dropped for, of course, Drapion. And then we have... Uh, I picked Megajaros, like I said there. I actually dropped Megajaros to getting Raikou. And then I dropped Raikou for Mega Dayenshi. <laughs> so that is my three changes. You only get three changes, of course. And um, yeah, bit weird. I probably should have done something else. And um, I just, I have to blame, of course, my two um, picks I did at work for not being well thought out. But as it is, I do believe my team is fine at best. Um, it is definitely above average depending on what we are facing, but we have the combination to fend people up. We have a lot of speed to at least enforce ourselves to not be forced to uh, to deal with speed ties all too much because we are actually extremely speedy. Um, I do believe my slowest mod is basically Palace Swine and Trevenant, which both are in the 50 base area. Outside of that, I have no mod slower than 95 base. Which is actually Jellison too, so I have three months a bit on a slow slide, the rest are above 95. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be extremely helpful. 
and yeah, I like it. It is, as always, you know, hyper offensive and it's cool with a few um, niches and a few defensive responses. I don't, you know, rely on defensive responses anyway in the first place. So um, having defensive options are good because at least I have some wiggle room depending upon the matchups. And uh, yeah, Mega Dian, she is a mod that will thrive in this environment. Uh, she is a definitely a mod that will do well. Uh, she has all the options to get out, which is exactly what you want from Mega Dian. You want her to not be able to be forced to stay in against a few matchups. I love that. The only issues I see with my team are, you know, a knockoff situation here. I do believe I have three mods, four mods weak to knockoff or dark moves, but I also have mods that can take dark hit moves, would of course be in the likes of Hydreigon, Mega Dienji, Creepion, Kabelion, and get a boost from it. So, while I have issues with it, I still have also mods that can take it. Uh, same thing goes with Earthquake, I do believe um, I had four mods weak to Earthquake. Uh, let's see, Denji, Kabelion, uh, Drapion, of course, and uh, Blaziken are weak to, of course, grounded moves. So that's unfortunate, but at least I have, like I said here, I do believe three floaters um, or that are above ground. I do believe, yeah, both Hydreigon, Latios, and Tornadoes are already floating, and of course, Trevin and Sokids. So, while it is an issue, an issue, definitely, I still have the options to not only void that off, but actually thrive within it. And uh, yeah, outside of that, of course, fighting is something that could be interesting. Having two ghost types is helpful. Too bad, of course, like I said here, that knockoff is so common to get a with fighting. But yeah, outside of that, that's probably my only issues I see. Uh, because I do... I think I solved everything else. I have a defogger, granted only one. But probably one of the better ones. Uh, then we have we have a spiker. I have, like I said, two stealth rocker, three in, in theory. Not that the energy is gonna set up rocks. I'm <laughs> looking at you, Sinon. <laughs> and of course, one, actually two toxic spikers. So the options are there, and I'm feeling that this is a team that could do potentially well. Uh, I just have to figure out how offensive and how aggressive I want to be, and but that's something that comes with due time. And uh, as time being, I think I'll do just fine in my own league, hopefully. <laughs> so yeah, what do you guys think about this, of course? Uh, do you like my draft or something that looks weird or some mod you want to see more of? Uh, make sure, of course, write it down below in the comment section. And uh, yeah, just general, thank you so much for watching. Always appreciate it, have you guys really just watch my content or anything. Uh, so yeah, guys, with that said, thank you so much for watching. Don't support to, or don't forget to support the Scandinavian Stutland, of course, in this season of the Valhalla Pokemon League. So, with that said, take care, guys. Bye.